Welcome to the channel, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about the fall of Satan and how this darkness overtook him, and then he starts corrupting everyone else. So, very interesting stuff. But before we get into the video, I do a regular biblical video on Mondays, and then every Thursday is a Warhammer 40k lore in the Bible series, and then other Warhammer 40k content as well. Let's go ahead and get started. And I know I was supposed to do bail today, but I'm kind of pivoting because we, we do kind of need to understand what went on and that there is this darkness out there. Very interesting stuff. Now, we're going to start in John 1 4. In him was the life, and the life was the light of men. Actually, we'll start 1 through 6 here. I'm sorry. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Huh. That's interesting. So we have Jesus being the light, right? Or God. And then we got this darkness here. That's interesting. And it said the darkness comprehended it not. So the darkness, you know, or what is anyways, I I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. So now we gotta understand who Satan is. Now. There's new people who watch my videos every week, so I'm sorry to the subscribers who keep hearing this over and over, but this isn't taught. You know what I mean? So people need to understand where I'm coming from. Okay. So, Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, I believe this is kind of at the end, right, when he makes his last push. But, he is a dragon, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan. So, he's a serpent and a dragon. Keep those in mind. So, this is the first book of Enoch, chapter 20. This is, uh, verse 7, Gabriel. One of the holy angels who was over paradise and the serpents and the cherubim. Huh. We have Satan as a dragon and a serpent. Huh. This is the first book of Enoch, chapter 20. And here's something for the Warhammer fans. Verse 5, Michael, one of the holy angels, to wit, he is that that is set over the best part of mankind and over chaos. Now, what what is this chaos? Of course, it's all the kingdom of darkness, but does it have to pertain some of this darkness? Interesting, or the shadow of death. Okay. But see, we have serpents here. What? Do we have in the kingdom of God or whatever, or these entities that he made up in heaven, we have a seraph, a fiery serpent. These are brought up in David, or Daniel, sorry. <laughs> in Daniel, they're brought up, the seraphim, right? Six wings, all that stuff, right? And then, but anyways, it means fiery serpent. A dragon would be a fiery serpent, wouldn't it? So, Satan is not a cherubim, but a seraphim. We were taught wrong on this, in my opinion. And it clearly states it. I mean, it's dragon, serpent. Nowhere in the Bible is a cherubim described as a serpent. Right? But anyways. So now we're going to get into the fall of Satan here and how this darkness overtook him. 
Now, this is the book of Adam and Eve. Take it with a grain of salt. But I do believe this. I used to think this book was totally Gnostic and out there. But once I started reading it, man, the word of God shows up, right? It, there's a prophecy of Jesus. <laughs> Literally, it says God is going to come into the flesh of, you know, talking to Adam, your descendants, and save you. I mean, I don't know. I I believe this, but I'll just say that. Okay. The fall of Adam, why night and day were created. This is chapter um, 13. Then when God, who was merciful and full of pity, heard Adam's voice, he said to him, O oh, Adam, so he's talking about Satan here, in my opinion, so long as the good angel was obedient to me, a bright light rested on him and on his hosts. Pay attention to that. So this is Satan. But when he transgressed my commandment, pay attention to that, he transgressed, he disobeyed God. I deprived him of that bright nature, and he became dark. Okay. And when he was in the heavens, in the realms of light, he knew nothing of darkness. It, this is kind of interesting here. What do we get here? And darkness comprehended it not. Huh. That's kind of interesting. So they didn't really know each other, it seems like. You know, I don't know. So it's like darkness is this new thing or something, right? Okay, um, but he transgressed. And I made him fall from heaven unto the earth. And it was this darkness that came over him. Interesting. And on you, O Adam. While in my garden and obedient to me. See the connection? Right? That Satan disobeyed him. And then this darkness was able. So, you know, let's say you take the mark of the beast. What happens? You know, you start worshiping and doing the ways of the beast instead of the ways of God. Right? It disconnects you from God, right? And it starts connecting you to darkness, right? Okay. Okay, but when I heard of your transgression, I deprived you of that bright light. Yet, of my mercy, I did not turn you into darkness. But I made your body of flesh, over which I spread this skin, in order that it may bear cold and heat. If I had let my wrath fall heavily on you, I should have destroyed you and, and had turned you into darkness. It would have been as if I had killed you. But in my mercy, I have made you as you are. When you transgress my commandment, O Adam, I drove you from the garden and made you come forth into this land and commanded you to live in this cave. And darkness covered you as it did over him who transgressed my commandment. Thus, O oh Adam, has his night deceived you? It is not to last forever, but it is only of twelve hours. When it is over, daylight will return. Sigh not, therefore, neither be moved, and say not in your heart that this darkness is long and drags on wearily, and say not in your heart that I plague you with it. Strengthen your heart, and be not afraid. This darkness is not a punishment. O oh, Adam, I have made the day and have placed the sun in it to give light in order that you and your children should do your work. For I knew you would sin and transgress and come out into this land. Yet I wouldn't force you, nor be heard over you, nor shut up, nor doom you through your fall, nor through your coming out from the light into darkness nor yet through your coming from the garden into this land. For I made you of light, and I will to bring out the children of light from you and like to you. The children of God, right? But you did not keep my commandment one day. 
until I had finished the creation and blessed everything in it. Then concerning the tree, I commanded you not eat of it. Yet I knew that Satan, who deceived himself, would also deceive you. So, it said Satan disobeyed God. Was this kind of the same thing? Don't touch this. Don't eat of this. But Satan did, right? And we're going to see that Satan, he's trying to become God. He's trying to be exactly like him, right? He wants everything that God has, right? Okay. So I made you known to you, or so I made known to you by the means of the tree, not to come near him. And I told you not to eat of the fruit thereof, nor taste of it, nor yet to sit under it, nor to yield to it. I had not been or been and spoken to you, O Adam, concerning the tree, and I had or and had I left you without a commandment, and you had sinned, it would have been an offense on my part for not having given you in any order. You would turn around and blame me for it, but I commanded you and warned you, and you fell, so that my creatures cannot blame me, but the blame rests on them alone, which means he gave you free will. Ain't that something? And, O oh Adam, I have made the day so that you and your descendants can work and toil in it. And I have made the night for them to rest in it from their work. And for the beasts of the field that go forth by night and look for, or look for their food. But little of darkness now remains, O oh Adam, and daylight will soon appear. Here's the, ready? You know, I'll read this too, why not? The earliest prophecy of the coming of Christ. So this is chapter 14. Then Adam said to God, O Lord, take you my soul, and let me not see this gloom any more, or remove me to some place where there is no darkness. There's that darkness again. But God, the Lord said to Adam, or but God, the Lord, said to Adam, Indeed I say to you, this darkness will pass from you every day I have determined for you unto the fulfillment of my covenant. When I will save you, pay attention to that, when I will save you, and bring you back again into the garden, into the house of light you long for, in which there was no darkness, I will bring you to it in the kingdom of heaven. Again, said God to Adam, all this misery that you have been made to take on yourself because of your transgression will not free you from the hand of Satan. And will not save you. But I will. When I shall come down from heaven. And shall become flesh of your descendants. And take on myself the infirmity of which you suffer. Then the darkness. There's the darkness. That covered you in this cave. Shall cover me in the grave. And when I am in the flesh of your descendants. And I who am without years. Shall be subject to the reckoning of years of times, of months, and of days, and I shall be reckoned as one of the sons of men. What is Jesus called? Son of man, right? The son of man. In order to save you. And God ceased to commune with Adam. Amen. <laughs> See, that's why I believe this right here. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say all of it is 100% accurate and all that, right? But this pretty much kind of agrees with what the scripture says, right? Okay. Now, we're going to get into Satan corrupting these chief ones, right? These are the, the seven kings of darkness. You know, that video that I did that caught on fire, man. But anyways neither here or there and basically they're the seven high um commanders of satan right let me read this part so you get okay. verse three this is chapter 69 and these are the chiefs of their angels and their names and their chief ones over hundreds and over fifties and over tens so we got Jaquan right here. There's five of them that are here. All right? 
So that is one who led astray the sons of God, or the sons of God. So these guys here, these angels, you know, on the lo lower on the totem pole, and brought them down to the earth and led them astray through the daughters of men. Okay, right here, Isaiah nine six. No, nope. edit it right here. I'll read this one first. Second Peter two four. For God, if spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So there's these five. How come we're not given five in the Bible? Ah, where is it? Right here. Revelation 17.10. And there are seven kings. So there's seven of them. So we're given two in the Bible, right? Satan and the Assyrian. I'll show you. But anyways, so there are seven kings. Five are fallen. One is, and the other is not yet come. And he cometh, he must continue a short space. Abaddon, the destroyer, the Assyrian, right? Because he comes up out of the pit in Revelation, right? In, right here. <laughs> Interesting. So that's, but these five are fallen. Five are fallen. And, and the beast that was, is not, is even of the eighth, and is of the seven. So he's of the seven, but he's the eighth. Check this out. Right here, we got the last guy here. Okay, we got Castilla. Now, this isn't him, but it'll mention the son of the serpent at the end. Okay, and the fifth was named Castilla. This is he who showed the children of men death and which destroy, oh, and all the wicked smitings of the spirits and demons. And the smitings of that, <laughs> the little ones, that it may pass away. And the smitings of the soul, the bites of the serpent, and the smitings which, bef this is interesting here. Remember, Israel were getting bite, bit by the seraphim in the desert. Remember that? Interesting. Okay. In the smitings which befall through the noontide heat. Ready? The son of the serpent named Tabiat. What does this say here? So five are fallen. One is, and the other is not yet come. And he cometh, he must continue a short space. Ready? And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, but is of the seven. He has the same authority as the seven, as the chief ones, right? That's Lucifer. And it calls Lucifer a man. And Lucifer, it's Hillel ben Shahar. Shahar is a Canaanite god. Satan's not the son of a Canaanite god. But anyways, I digress. Lucifer, is, he's called the son of the morning, right? Son of the serpent. Leviathan is literally referenced as morning in a lot of Hebrew texts. And in the Bible, in Job, where it talks about Leviathan, it says the eyes were like the morning. Ah, sorry, didn't mean to hit the mic there. But anyways, we'll get to that. Now I want to get to this. So this is why Satan wanted to have Lucifer or a Jesus-like type in the kingdom of darkness. Okay. So this is the close of the third parable. This is the same chapter, verse 26. And there was a great joy amongst them, and they blessed and glorified and extolled because the name of, ready, that son of man, Jesus, had been revealed unto them, and he sat on the throne of his glory, and the sum of judgment was given unto that Son of Man, or to the Son of Man, and he caused the sinners to pass away and be destroyed from the face of the earth, and those who have led the world astray. With chains shall they be bound, and in their um, assemblage place of destruction shall be their imprisoned, and all their works vanish from the face of the earth. Here we go. 
for that son of man has appeared. Oh, I'm sorry. Imprisoned and their works banished from the earth, and from henceforth there shall be nothing corrupt. For that son of man has appeared, and he has seated himself on the throne of his glory, and all evil shall pass away before his face. And the word of that son of man, the Bible, shall go forth and be strong before the Lord of spirits. This is the third parable of Enoch. Interesting. So, G, so Satan's seeing all this. He's seeing this light being placed as king and over everything. And they got this Godhead who's control of it all. And not only that, they're the same person, right? Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit. Try on, you know, a trinity, but one. Anyways. Yeah. Of course, we've got Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Right? So Jesus is God. You can think of Jesus almost like an avatar, I guess you could say, of the Godhead. A human avatar of the Godhead. Anyways. I'm thinking of Avatar like the movie, right? The Pandora and all that. We'll move on here. See. All right. So now we have this darkness, right? Satan corrupted those seven. Now he's moving to this, these two, the behemoth and Leviathan. And I'll show you. So Genesis 1, 2. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Right? So he's getting all these people and he's corrupting them with this darkness, right? Mainly to fight against the Lord and usurp the Lord. And so he becomes God, right? We're going to see that she, that this darkness and stuff empowers these entities. But anyways, and she's kind of behind it. So what do you see here? And darkness was upon the face of the deep. This is the Norse goddess Hell. We're going to go in further. Ezekiel 31 4. The waters made him great. Now, this is talking about the Assyrian. The waters made him great. The deep set him up on high with her rivers. Ready? The deep set him up on high with her rivers. Round about his plants and sent out her little rivers of the field. Okay. We'll go a little bit deeper. So this is hell, right? Hell was one of the children, or I'm sorry, originally the name of the world of the undead. It later came to mean the goddess of death. Hell, did you notice that? The goddess of death. What does this say? The deeps have set him up on high with her rivers. Okay. Okay. Hell was one of the ch children of the trickster god Loki, and her kingdom was said to lie downward and northward. It was called Nephilim. Okay, we're going to see what Nephilim has here. The cold, dark, misty world of the dead, ruled by the goddess Hell. In some accounts, it was the last of the nine worlds, a place in which evil men passed after reaching the region of death. Pay attention to this part right here. After reaching the region of death, Hell. Situated below one of the roots of the world tree, Yggdrasil. I think that's how you say it. I've never been able to figure that one out. But anyways, if someone who knows Norse mythology a lot, let me know in the comments how to say that. But Niflheim contained a well. Huh. Verglamer. It's Hvlergmer. Something like that. I, I can't say it, man. I'm, I'm sorry for all the... Norse people out there, I apologize. But. From which many rivers flowed. What do we have here? My voice cracked. My goodness. Her little rivers running about his plants. 
You know, is this where, like, the fountain of youth comes from, right? All that. And now, we're going to get into how I think Satan corrupted all these entities. So we have this river, right? Oops. Yeah, Nephilim. From which many rivers flowed in Norse creation, right? We have the deep. The waters made him great. The deep set him up on high with her rivers. So these rivers are empowering the second in command, right? This is how Satan is corrupting everybody through this, whatever this is, right? We can see it right here. This is the Assyrian, a.k.a. the destroyer. We're going to see... It calls him the destroyer, literally, in Isaiah 14. There's another place where it says all that is in his heart is there to destroy, right? If you want to check that out, um, the seven kings of darkness and the eighth. I did a video on that. and I, talk, I go in depth with him. Anyways. Okay, behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with bare branches and with a shadowing shroud and of a high stature. And his top was among the thick boughs. The waters made him great. The deep set him up on high with her rivers running about his plants. And sent out her little rivers into all the trees of the field. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field. And this the boughs were multiplied. And his branches became long because of the multitude of the waters. When he shot forth. All the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs. And under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young. And under his shadow dwelt all great nations. Huh, this is interesting. Thus was he fair in his greatness, the length of his branches. For his root was by great waters. Huh. And the cedars in the garden of God. Oh wait, he's in the garden of God. Right? And then there's nations. That's interesting. Sorry, I keep hitting the mic. Thus was he fair. Or, blah, blah, blah. Okay. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs. And the chestnut trees were not like his branches. Nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast lifted up thyself in height, and he has shot up his top among the thick boughs, and his heart lifted up the height. I have therefore delivered him into the hand of the mighty one of the heathen. He shall surely deal with him. I have driven him out for his wickedness. And the strangers and the terrible of the nations have cut him off and have left him upon the mountains and all the valleys of his branches are fallen. And his boughs are broken by all the rivers of the land and all the people of the earth are gone down from his shadow. Interesting. That's weird. And have left him. Upon his ruin shall all the fowls of heaven remain. And all the beasts of the field shall be upon his branches. To the end, none of all the trees by the waters exalt themselves for their height. Neither shoot, oh, excuse me, neither shoot up, or their top among the thick boughs. Neither their trees stand up for their height. All that drink water, for they are all delivered unto death. To the nether parts of the earth, in the midst of the children of men. Whoa. In the midst of the children of men, they're all going down to the pit and all this? With them that go down to the pit. The children of men, all this, there's nations. Huh. Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when he went down to the grave, I caused a mourning. I covered the deep for him, and I restrained the floods thereof. And the great waters were stayed, and I caused Lebanon to mourn for him. And all the trees of the field fainted for him. I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall. When I cast him down to hell with them that descend into the pit. So this is the Assyrian being cast into the pit. 
right? So this is why, and then he comes out. He continues a short space, right? But anyways, and it caused Lebanon to mourn for him, and all the trees of the field fainted for him. I made, oh, well. Anyways. Oh, and I made the nations shake at the center of fall, and I cast down and descended to the pit, and all the trees of Eden. The choice and the best of Lebanon, all that drink water, shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. Hmm. Interesting. So there's the Assyrian. And we're not done with him yet. So, wait. Okay. Oh, yes. And real quick. Where it says, right here. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So this is when this is that, that rebellion happens, and there's this form, this darkness, right? It's on the face of the deep, and this is when that cataclysmic rebellion happened, and God is getting ready to remake the earth, in my opinion. Right here. So Isaiah 45, 18. For thus saith the Lord that God created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord. There is none else. But yet right here, it says the earth was without form and void. Tohu, you know, and bohu, or I forget how you say that word, but it's basically the same word. Where it says right here, you know, Sam the Fort was not made boy or made in vain and formed it to be inhabited. It was not tohu, right? It was not void. Okay, and the spirit of the water moved upon the face of the waters. Isn't that interesting? Anyways. Okay. Now we're going to get into the anti-Jesus, right? Or the anti-Christ. So we're going to start, you know, in verse 1. But I also want to point out, what is Jesus? Jesus is the light of the men, right? He's the light of men. Well, Lucifer's name means the shining one. It doesn't mean the morning star. It means the shining one. Hello means the shining one. Isn't that interesting? But anyways. And here's a prophecy about the Gentiles clinging to the house of Jacob as well. Right? I guess God isn't a racist. But anyways, I digress. Isaiah chapter 14. For the Lord, or for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. And will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. What does Paul say? We are grafted into the olive tree, right? We are Israel. Anybody that accepts Jesus is in the house of Israel, right? Has nothing to do with bloodline. Nothing. Never did. In the Exodus, it says that, you know, you and the sojourners with you. These Egyptians just saw their gods get their butts kicked. Wouldn't you want to go with Israel? <laughs> and God did. They wanted to follow God. So it was like, now, of course, they fell just like everyone else. But still, you know what I mean? <laughs> but anyways, it has nothing to do with bloodline. And the people shall take them and bring them for their place. Okay, this isn't, we'll get into that. Okay. And it shall come to pass. Yeah, we'll start here. Verse, oops, didn't mean to press that. Okay, thou shalt take, this is verse 4. Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. Is, in my opinion, is Babylon. You'll see in the king of Tyre, or Tyre, right? 
in the midst of the sea, or the city in the midst of the seas, right? But anyways, the Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with the continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. I've done plenty of videos on this guy. So, Poseidon is known as the god of earthquakes as well. He's the god of the sea. The beast comes up out of the sea. Um, the Poseidon had ten sons. There's ten kings with the beast, right? Interesting. And Poseidon was the god of Atlantis, wasn't he? You could think I'm crazy, right? But every um, culture around the world has a story of a golden city. So, do what you will with that. Okay, the Lord hath broke, oh, sorry. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to finish this. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. Wait, there's nations there? Huh. The whole earth is at rest, and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon sing. Since thou art laid down, no feller has come up against us. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. There's nations again. All they sh shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Okay. Huh, it's these people saying, Aren't you becoming, you're no longer a god? Right? You become like un. You become like us. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of the voils, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. So this is the rebellion. We're seeing the rebellion right now, right? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weak at the nations? Now, Lucifer is not Satan, right? Like I said, Satan's not the son of a god, right? And um, it literally calls Lucifer a man here. But anyways, okay, I just wanted to say that. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Or you could say, son of the serpent, right? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weak at the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. So he's ascending into heaven, right? So he, he tries to ascend into heaven. He gets slapped right back down. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Okay. Where, who does this sound like? First off, sounds like the beast of Revelation, doesn't it? Where does the beast of Revelation come from? He comes up out of the pit. Interesting. Now, this is where it calls him a man. Verse 16. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake the kingdoms? Now remember, Poseidon's known as the earthquake god. Interesting. That made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, everyone in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the remnant of those that are slain, thrust through with the sword, and go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trotted under feet. 
Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. That's interesting. So he's got a seed. Prepare slaughter for his children. Huh. Poseidon and his ten sons. For the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face with face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name, the remnant, and son, and nephew, and saith the Lord. I will make it a possession for the bitter, and the pools of the water. means he's going to bring it down with water, a flood, right? What happened to Atlantis? A flood, right? And you can see evidence of this throughout the whole world. Um, I did a video called The Rise of Atlantis. And I show you pictures from all over the world of these underwater cities, I guess you can say, right? That, are, that were destroyed. And they weren't underwater at first, but the floods came, put them underwater. When you see bittern in the pools of water, you know, a bittern, they're water, you know. Um, anyways. It, <laughs> Okay, and I will sweep it with the bosom of destruction. So now we're getting into the Assyrian, saith the Lord of hosts. And remember in Exodus, he says, you know, put the blood on the lamppost so, the so you won't suffer the destroyer. This is him. Saith the Lord of hosts, the Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, surely, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. That I will break the Assyrian in my land. Right? So it's saying, I will you know, sweep it with the bosom of destruction. Right? Here. That I will break the Assyrian in my land and upon my mountains, tread him underfoot. Yet again, we have the Assyrian being mentioned here. Right? Then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that pur or purposed upon the whole earth. And this is the hand that stretched out upon all the nations, right? So, there's nations, first off, with this character, Lucifer and the Assyrian and all these, you know, it's basically, you have Egypt, you have this, what Bible calls it Babylon, but you could say Atlantis and these Ten regions around the world. They were worldwide. Okay. And Atlantis was that capital city in the midst of the seas. And the Bible talks about this with the Prince of Tyre and the King of Tyre. I mean, you can go look it up right now, right? Very interesting stuff. And what do we know? The gods ruled Atlantis, right? But Satan, he corrupted all the, these angels and stuff like that, right? These entities, these creatures and whatnot. And Lucifer. Do, okay. This is purpose. For the Lord of hosts have purpose. Oh, right here. And he's a seraphim. That's right. That's what I was going to get into. Right here, 29, or verse 29. Rejoice not thou, O Palestinia, because of the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. So there's another seraphim. We got two seraphims, right? Satan. In the Assyrian, or A.K.A. the the Destroyer, or Abaddon, or whatever whatever you want to call. It. Now, we're going to learn more about these people of old. Ezekiel twenty six twenty, when I shall bring thee down with them, that descend into the pit, with the people of old time, and shall set thee in the low parts of the earth. In places desolate of old. Huh. With them that go down to the pit. 
that thou would not be inhabited, and I shall set glory in the land of the living. So, them that descended to the pit with the people of old time. So there's people there who fell. Interesting. Now we're going to get a little bit more into that here. So of course we have all this, right? In Genesis 1, let's go all the way to 6th day. So we're at the 5th day. So 23, in the evening and the morning were the 5th day. Now this is the 6th day. 24, and God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature. After his kind, cattle and creepy thing and the beasts of the earth after his kind, not angel, human, right? Not frog and beaver, right? After its own kind, horse could have made with the horse, right? Yeah. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind and everything creepeth on the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish in the sea. This is the sixth day now, okay? And over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and every creeping thing. So, there's something else I want to point out here. This very well could be Adam and Eve, but this could be, we saw that there, there was nations there, right? So, this is the sixth day. And, um, where is it? Right. So, God created man in his own image. The image of God created he, him, male, and female created he, them. There's a little bit different creation with Adam and Eve, it seems like. But, again, let me keep reading. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Image and the image of God, he created he them, and female created he them. Pay attention to this part here. Okay, verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish in the sea, over fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So even then, with these guys, it's saying, to replenish the earth. What does replenish mean? To bring on something or that was there before, but that was destroyed. But now you got to replenish it. Interesting. So let's go to the next chapter. So, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them, and on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and rested on the seventh day from all his works, which he had made. Okay. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, and God created and made. These are the generations of heaven and the earth when they were created. In the day of the Lord, God made the earth and the heavens. Okay. Do, 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 do. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb on the field before it grew. For the Lord of God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Hold up. Hold up. Wasn't there? Hold up. Six day man? What happened? Okay. This is why I'm not saying it's 100% fact. I'm just saying there's some people who say that there was a six day man and then a seven day man, which would be Adam and Eve. And the, I mean, there were nations back then, right? And it tells six day man to replenish what was before, right? So there even could have been people before that. <laughs> I mean, it says it right there in all these, like the people of old time. The, you know, all nations were under his shadow and stuff like that. So now Satan got all these people to fall and got all the whole world corrupted, right? The whole world. 
right? So then God started over and made, you know, a new creation. At least that's what it seems to me. Okay. I just wanted to put that out there. Now, this right here proves, right here, that Satan wants to mimic God. Because he sees how it's effective it is, and stuff like that. So let, let me show you. So this is chapter 27. I'm terrible with Roman numerals, by the way. When Satan, the hater of all good, saw how they continued in prayer, and how God communed with them, and comforted them. He had accepted their offering. Satan made an apparition. He began with transforming his hosts in his hands or was a flashing fire, and they were in a great light. Okay? The scriptures say this. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Let's keep going. So he began with transforming his, his hosts, and his hands was a flashing fire, and they were in a great light. He then placed his throne. Now, is this a spaceship of some kind or something? That's interesting, right? He places it near the mouth of the cave because he could not enter it or enter into it by the reason of their prayers. And he shed light into the cave, and to the cave glistened over Adam and Eve, while his hosts began to sing praises. So they're acting like the angels of God and mimicking the light of God. This is why God says we must worship him in spirit and in truth, right? And Satan did this in order that when Adam saw the light, he should think within himself that it was, that it was a heavenly light and that Satan's hosts were angels and that God had sent them to watch at the cave and to give him light in the darkness. So that when Adam came out of the cave and saw them, and Adam and Eve bowed to Satan. Then he would overcome Adam thereby, and the second time humbled him before God. When therefore Adam and Eve saw the light, fancying it was real, they strengthened their hearts. Yet, as they were trembling, Adam said to Eve, Look at that great light, and at those many songs of praises, and at the host standing outside who won't come into our cave. Why don't they tell us what they want? Where the, where they are from, what the meaning of this light is, what those per praises are, and why they have been sent into this place, why they won't come in. You see, this this is that intelligent part of that brain of ours, right? It's going. Wait a minute, something ain't right, right? So he's asking all these questions. Ready? If they were from God, they would come into the cave with us and would tell us why they weren't sent. Then Adam stood up and prayed to God with a burning heart and said, O oh Lord, is there in the world another God beside you who created angels and filled them with light and sent them to keep us, who would come with them? But look, we see these hosts that stand at the mouth of the cave. So he's going to God. Making sure things be true, right? Going to the word of God is what we need to do. Okay. They are in great light. They sing loud praises. If they are some other God than you, tell me. And if they are sent by you, inform me of this reason for which you have sent them. No sooner had Adam said this than an angel from God appeared to him in the cave, who said to him, O oh Adam, fear not. This is Satan and his host. He wishes to deceive you as he had deceived you at first. For the first time, he was hidden in the serpent. 
So he possessed that serpent, right? The one that's eaten dust and all that. But this time he has come to you in the likeness of an angel of light, in order that when you worshipped him, he might enslave you in the very presence of God. Then the angel went from Adam and seized Satan at the opening of the cave, stripped him of the pretense he had assumed, and brought him in his own hideous form to Adam and Eve. Pay attention to that part. Who were afraid of him when they saw him. And the angel said to Adam, This hideous form has been his, or has been his, to so this darkness totally corrupted his body. All right? God made him fall from heaven, or this hideous form has been his ever since God made him fall from heaven. He could not have come near you in it. He therefore transformed himself into an angel of light. Then the angel drove away Satan and his host from Adam and Eve, and he said to them, Fear not, God who created you will strengthen you. And the angel left them. But Adam and Eve remained standing in the cave. No consulate came to them. They divided in their thoughts. And when it was morning, they prayed. And then went out to seek the garden. For, the, or for their hearts were towards it. And they couldn't get no consolation for having left it. Crazy, huh? Interesting, and Is this true? It seems to be. We got some confirmation right here, right? right. Now I want to. We're going to end with this one here. So, Revelation twelve four. And his tail. They're talking about Satan, right? Drew a third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for her to devour her child as soon as it was or as soon as it was born. So he can put his guy in there. Antichrist means to be in place of Christ, right? This is Lucifer, in my opinion. And Lucifer's not Satan. But now, you know, we can see why Satan does the stuff that he does, right? He's trying, he literally is trying to become God. So that part that the church talks about is true, is right. But he's not a cherubim. He's not, it calls him a dragon, a, you know, a seraphim, which means fiery serpent. You know, nowhere does a cherubim call him, or I'm sorry, does a cherubim ever be called a serpent, right? But anyways. We need to understand that there is this darkness, right? It wasn't just the knowledge of good and evil. It was the knowledge of light and darkness, right? <laughs> you know, the knowledge of Jesus and then the knowledge of darkness, right? And that's what it's about. And we need to come to the Word of God in spirit and in truth, right? It's not what I say. It's not what Pastor such and such says or Deacon such and such says, you know. It's what does Jesus have to say? What does the Word of God have to say? You know what I mean? And it's right here, right? King James Bible Online dot org. Free. 100% free. I don't have to pay a single cent for this. And I. Um, put on the ad blocks, you know, to give you guys a little bit of respect. Cause I understand you guys don't want to see ads. But on my other one, you know, on the other browser and stuff, I keep the ads on, right, to support them. But I don't want you guys to get annoyed by all the ads popping up. So, but anyways, I'm digressing here. Thank you guys for watching, and you guys have a wonderful day.